I hate to bother you, but we're from the United States. We're staying at the Royal Imperial Windsor Arms. Royal Imperial Windsor? Yeah, exactly. oh, very nice hotel. Well, yeah, we like it. It's a little small. Yeah. Well, you uh, you go back the way you came. Oh, my God. Oh. I think you've got a bad cut there. We better get you to the hospital. It's just a flesh wound, honestly. And, uh, Are you sure? Nothing to write home about. Okay. No need to bother, Matron. Did you say left or right? Well, hopefully we can avoid those flesh wounds in the shop today. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're going to take a look at another five tools that are less commonly known. Let's take a look at these five tools and see if any of them interest you. So one of the things that I've really been enjoying on this channel is finding those less prominent tools that aren't always featured in YouTube videos. Apart from putting a dent in my pocketbook, the purchase of these tools has been a real positive experience, and a lot of these tools aren't getting the credit they deserve. And this is why I think it's important to take a look at these tools, as a lot of these tools are cheaper options to do the things that you want to do in your shop. So let's get started and talk about our first item. So I've got a question for you. How much is one finger worth to you? Leave a comment below and let me know the minimum amount of money that you would take to have one finger removed. In fact, this is the exact same question that I asked myself before purchasing my saw stop. Is a finger or an entire hand worth the $4,000 this machine costs? But this first item we're gonna take a look at doesn't value your fingers at a few thousand dollars, but $1 million for each finger. That's $10 million. So would you take a million dollars to get rid of one finger? That's a tough question for me. Probably depends on which one. But in all seriousness, this is a tool that I've been looking at for a long time. And this thing's gonna live over at my miter saw. So let's start to talk about it. So one of the best things that I learned from watching Steve Ramsey is you always need to think through your cuts. Think of where the blade's gonna be when you make your entire cut. And this basically means if there's ever a cut that you think might be just a little bit sketch like this one right here, you should absolutely not do that cut. And I would have to say that this filling occurs at the miter saw more than any other saw in my shop. And that's because instead of your blade being stationary like it is over at the table saw, your miter saw blade is actually moving. So let's get a little safer over at the miter saw and take a look at this tool made by FastCap. This is the $10 million stick. And no, it doesn't cost $10 million, but less than $24. And I can tell you right now, I would pay $24 for any one of these fingers. So how does this thing work and what's the structure of it? Well, it really couldn't be more simple. It's got a rubber handle in the very center of it, as well as three legs with a rubber pad on each leg. So why three legs? Well, the answer is simple. Why does a stable stool have three legs or a tripod have three legs? This is because three legs is much more stable than four. But not only that, the three legs on this tool give you a few options when you're making cuts at the miter saw. Let's go take a look. So the first option is to use the singular leg. And if we wanted to cut this small piece of plywood, we could use that leg and place support right on top of that plywood. And since this thing has three legs, not only is the plywood supported with the leg, but the back two legs are also very secure. If you have a wider piece of stock, this tool can also be flipped around. And with your wider stock on the miter saw, you can give support with the two legs and have the back leg fully supported as well. So this really is an amazing little safety tool. I can't wait to start using it and having a little bit more assurance that all these little guys will just be a little bit safer. So until they make a saw stop miter saw, get one of these so that you can be woodworking for years to come. So now that we feel a little bit safer at the miter saw, let's go over to the table saw and take a look at a tool that I'm pretty excited about. So one tool that I featured around the holidays is this tiny little square. And I'll be honest, I use this thing all the time. It's super nice because it fits in the pocket of your vest. And not only that, but it's super convenient to grab when you want to check something quick and dirty for square. And really the only limitations you have with this guy are what make it so useful. And that's its small size. It also doesn't have any markings on the base of the tool. So when I saw this next square, I thought I'd give it a try and see if it would give that little red square a run for its money. This is a magnetic micro square made by FastCap. Let's go check it out. So if we take a look at the FastCap square and comparing it to the red square, you can see that it's just a little bit larger. Another nice feature of the FastCap square is it does have imperial markings on one side as well as metric on the other. Another feature that I really like is the lip on the very bottom. This will allow you to rest it against the edge of your workpiece and create those perfectly square angles. Another nice feature of this tool, as the name implies, is it is magnetic. It's got two magnets on the very bottom of this tool that allow you to attach it to most metals. So with that metal lip on the bottom, you can be assured that your angles are perfectly square. And in this case, I'm actually gonna check for square just to make sure that this thing is accurate. 
and we can see there's only one line there. So this thing is completely square. But we can also use this square at things like our table saw to make sure that our blade is completely perpendicular to the base of our table. Also, I wanted to mention that the magnetic base of this square maintains magnetic contact with your table. A lot of these magnetic tools don't account for the non-magnetic material of your blade guard. This square also has two scales on it. The interior square references the lip of the square, while the exterior square references the bottom of the square. So if you're looking for a small square that can fit in your pocket that has a few more features than the small red square that I recommend, this may be the tool for you. Plus, with this square being less than $25, this thing isn't going to break the bank like a lot of those other red squares. So I'm going to send both of these squares home by putting them in my apron. Well, that's two items we've taken a look at so far. Our next tool is an accessory that has everything to do with finishing and sanding. Let's start to talk about finishing and sanding. So for finishing, we're wanting to raise our workpiece up off our tabletop. This allows airflow to get underneath our workpiece and allow the items that we just finished to dry. For sanding, we're looking for a nice grip on our workpiece so that it doesn't slide on our tabletop. So when we talk about finishing, most of you are very familiar with the red pyramid. I have a lot of these and they're quite inexpensive. Or you can make your own simply by taking a piece of plywood and sticking a nail through it. You nailed it. Or maybe you've spent a little bit more money and purchased something like these Rockler Bench Cookies. And these do a great job of providing friction on your tabletop surface when you're sanding something down. You can also purchase these little caps that do the same thing as those red pyramids. And I really like these bench cookies as they provide the grip you need when you're doing your sanding. And by adding the little cap, you can make these into those little pyramids. The problem is in order to get a kit with both the cap and the bench cookie, you're looking at something that's gonna cost almost $70. And even though I purchased those Rockler bench cookies and their caps, it hurt a bit when I bought them. So when I saw this next item, I had sticker shock in a good way. Plus it's made by one of my favorite brands, Milescraft. And this does the same thing that those bench cookies do along with their caps. This is the Milescraft Tri-Grips. Why do I want a steak right now? So let's take a look at this less than $9 accessory and see if it can compete with the bench cookie. So here's what you're gonna get in the packaging. As you can see, there's four tri-grips. These tri-grips have a soft rubber pad on the front as well as the back. This provides the friction you need when you're doing your sanding. If you look at the very bottom of the tri-grip, there's also a rubber pad. This allows you to stand it on end and you have the pyramid top. So instead of having to have two pieces with the Rockler bench cookie for sanding and finishing, you can do it all with one piece with the Milescraft Tri-Grip. You can lay it flat for the sanding and then flip it on end to do the finishing. So for about one seventh the price of that Rockler bench cookie set, you can get all that functionality in one tool with this Milescraft Tri-Grip. Well, that's three really cost-effective tools we've taken a look at so far. Before we move on to our fourth, I ask you to do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It truly does help out this small woodworking channel. Also, for all the tools that we're taking a look at today, I'm leaving links in the description below so you can go check out these tools for yourself. Now let's move on to our fourth item. So the next item we're gonna take a look at today has everything to do with making sure that you drill completely perpendicular to your workpiece without having to go to your drill press. Now there's a couple of different ways you could do this. You could take the expensive route or the cheap route, and I've gone both ways. Let me show you the two tools that I've purchased to do the perpendicular drilling. So here are a couple of tools that I've purchased over the years to help me with my perpendicular drilling. There's the expensive route with the Rockler Drill Guide. There's also the cheap route with a Milescraft drill block. Now with the Rockler drill guide, I was quite disappointed with this purchase. This is a very well-made tool, but I was expecting it to replace my drill press, and that's just not what this tool is built for. I've even got an entire video explaining my experience with this tool. Now if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the Rockler drill guide, you can't go wrong with the Milescraft drill block. This thing's got a really ergonomic feel to it and it does a great job of making those 90 degree drill holes. Now this next tool is very similarly built to that Milescraft drill block. However, it's made by Craig. So I thought it would be useful to take a look at it and see how it compares to that Milescraft drill block. So this next tool is the Craig drill guide. Let's unbox this and see how it compares. So first off, let's talk about the price variance between these two tools. 
The Milescraft drill block is $8, while the Craig drill block is $9. So there's very little difference between these two tools. There's also the same drill holes. There's a half inch, a 3 8 a 5 16 a quarter, a 3 16 as well as an eighth inch hole. Although that the drill bit guidance for both of these tools is exactly the same width, you can see that the Milescraft sits a little bit higher than the Craig. Now when I put both of these drill blocks into my hand, they're both very comfortable. There's a little bit of difference, however, with the Craig drill guide. Let's take a closer look. Now, although I don't have a whole lot of experience with the Craig tool yet, I do have some experience with the Milescraft. Now, one thing that's very important with a drill block is that it's securely fastened to your workpiece. One thing that I have noticed with this Milescraft drill block is it does tend to rotate with your drill, which can be really frustrating. Now the Craig drill guide has got a lot of ribs and notches on the side that you can place your fingertips into. Now what I have noticed when using this so far is this seems to provide just a little bit more stability as you're pushing your drill through. So even though that Craig drill guide may not be as comfortable as that Milescraft drill guide, it does provide just a little bit more accuracy when you're going to drill out your holes. And frankly, that's what's most important when doing your drilling, is the accuracy and precision of your drilling. So I'm gonna give just a little bit higher rating to the Craig drill guide versus the Milescraft drill block. Well, that's four tools down and only one more thing left to take a look at. And this next thing is a critical item for your table saw. What's that, you may ask? It's a table saw blade. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of blades you can put in your table saw. So there's three types of general blades that you can put in your table saw. That's the ripping blade, the cross cut blade, as well as the combination blade. Typically a ripping blade is a blade that has 24 to 40 teeth and usually has larger gullets to take away the waste when you're making your cut. A cross cut blade typically has more teeth somewhere between 60 to 80 teeth and usually has very small gullets to remove waste material. And a combination blade, as the name implies, usually has a higher number of teeth along with some larger gullets in between those teeth. So in my table saw, I've always had combination blades. And the reason for this is not only can it do the ripping, but it can also do the cross cutting. But the problem with having a combination blade is there's typically no flat teeth on the blade. This makes it really difficult to get a clean finish when you're trying to do things like dados. So if we look at this diagram, you can see how these diagonal blades always left little ridges in my dados. So this is why I decided to go ahead and get a dedicated rip blade. This should allow me to create clean dados without having to do a whole lot of cleanup. And the blade I chose to go with is the Freud Heavy Duty Rip Blade. And this has got a flat tooth grind. So let's go over the table saw. So before I switch this blade out, I did want to show you what a dado looks like with my combination blade that's already installed. So I'm going to create a dado with this combination blade. We'll switch out the blade to this rip blade and see the difference between the two. So hopefully you can see from this image all the indentations that were created from the combination blade. And this is what I'm going to try to get rid of. By switching it out to a rip blade, all these should disappear. So let's go ahead and switch this blade out. So now let me do a dado with the rip blade right next to that combination blade and we'll take a look at the difference. So here we have the first combination blade and hopefully you can see all those little lines. And if we take a look at the rip blade, it's completely smooth. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So if you don't have a dado stack or you create a lot of dados over at your table saw, switch over to a rip blade with a flat tooth grind. This will absolutely make all your dados come out crisp and clean. Well, that's gonna do us for today, folks. I really appreciate you joining me on checking out these five incredible tools. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment as it truly does make a difference in this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.